Happy New Year. 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 It's Wes. Welcome to this video. Today I'm going to tell you why uh, the R, the EOS R, not the R5, is probably the best uh, landscape camera out there from Canon right now. I'm so excited to share this information with you. I was thinking about how I started this channel and it was through landscape photography. I looked up to photographers like Thomas Heaton. Doing my best Thomas Heaton out here. Uh, I'm in the uh, San Marin headlands, I think. Anyway, so there's this gorgeous place to stop off and I wish I had Thomas Heaton here so I could get a better photo and and others and um, I'll put a link to my first probably embarrassing video where I did landscape photography um, but I've never really dedicated a video to why the EOS R is a great choice for landscape photography so that's what we're gonna do today hopefully this is helpful information uh, I like talking to people on Instagram so you can uh, send me a message on Instagram or if you're not aware, I use the community tab to post polls and get information and get conversations going. So uh, a viewer told me, actually I'll give him a shout out, Gareth. Gareth said, send them over to the community tab because a lot of people don't know it's there. So just go to my channel, look to the right, and there'll be videos, playlists, community about, and participate in the conversations on the community tab. I'm also on Twitter, I'll put that information here. But right now, let's talk about the EOS R. This is the R5. But some of the things that separate the R5 from the R, like IBIS, like speed, um, uh, resolution even, 45 megapixels versus 30, some of those don't necessarily give you a payoff for landscape photography. So I thought I'd share my thoughts on why the EOS R is a great choice, probably the best choice right now for landscape photography. You're a beautiful person and a good person. And if no one has told you that today, let me be the first person to tell you that. All right, I'm gonna save you $2,000 right now. Well, if you were considering the R5 for landscape photography, that is. There's a better solution, and that's the Canon EOS R. Yes, the camera is a few years old, but it is currently the best camera that uh, Canon makes, I think, for the money uh, for landscape photography. So whether you're out in the desert, you're at the beach, you're in the mountains, anywhere. This includes uh, cityscapes, urban architecture, um, anywhere where you're taking pictures of still largely um, still objects out in nature in the city. I think this camera rocks. And let's talk about how you're going to save money and have great results with the Canon EOS R in 2021. Now, 2022. That's right. It's 30 megapixels. 30 megapixels is plenty of resolution and there's software now, uh, like even Lightroom has this feature where you can um, create higher megapixel versions from an image. Um, so there's AI out there that will sample it and resample and stitch it back together and make higher resolution uh, pictures or images if you need that, but I think 30 is plenty. So another reason why it's great is it's durable. Um, it's rugged. I've had it out in Joshua Tree in freezing temperatures, doing astrophotography um, and landscape photography as the sun came up. It's a great camera. It's durable, weather sealed. So it, it's going to hold up outdoors. Um, battery life is also good. So that's one reason why the EOS R would be helpful taking out into nature, into these uh, areas where you're not likely to be able to recharge your battery. So you want good battery life. Um, so battery life is good. It's durable. It's rugged. Uh, it's full frame and that's part of the, um, the package with the 30 megapixels. It's full frame. So you're getting a lot of sensor to cover, um, or to grab those images with. So it's going to outperform things that are APS-C for example. So I would say that's a very important consideration and why I would use it for landscape photography. Um, I've used my EOS R uh, when I had it. I don't currently own one. We have them at work, but for astrophotography and paired with some great lenses like the RF 15 to 35, you can get stellar, <laughs> stellar results for astrophotography. So the R really comes in um, great. Now, some of the downfalls of the R that people would talk about 
are really on the video spec side. Uh, lack of IBIS, which I, I think of that primarily for, for video, though it does help for photography. Um, the 4K crop, again, that's a video spec issue. And only being able to access the 10-bit 422 uh, via external HDMI, that's also a downfall. But that's, that's videography. For photography, um, it's a little bit slow, and I've talked about in some of my uh, videos where I mentioned sports photography. Um, but in landscape, your subject isn't moving, so you probably don't need that. It also has a nice time-lapse feature um, that may be where a landscape photographer enters into that videography world. Um, but the Canon EOS R has a great time-lapse feature, and I'll put a link to a video. Uh, it's actually turned out to be one of my most watched videos is how to use the EOS R for, for time-lapse. So again, you don't need IBIS. You're using a uh, tripod for stabilization, uh, largely in landscape photography. Those are my thoughts. I think the EOS R absolutely kills it in the landscape photography department. Uh, my favorite lens would be the the RF 15 to 35, but I recently did a video and I'll link it up here about how you can use even like a portrait lens, like a 50 millimeter, and then stitch those images together in Lightroom. All right, I'm testing a new st studio setup, so I'll give you a little tour. And I'm trying this, uh, got this uh, soft box here and I have a tungsten light gel in there to warm up this and I set the Kelvin lower in the background. I've done this before, but I really wanted to try it again because I like how that uh, makes the background look nice and cool and I look all warm. Anyway, so this is it. We got a couple of LED lights here on the background and then I have this new, well you can't really see it, this new uh, round table. I bought the new tabletop but the, the table, Pablo from Buenos Dias Imagery will recognize because we threw it out at work. It was kind of a leftover table. Um, so I'm using this round table here to film on. So looking forward to using this setup. Oh yeah, and I have these very poles. I don't know if you can see them right here. Yeah, these very poles just uh, kind of mount and you can move them around the room. And so that is, that's it. So yeah, I love this light. It's a great light. All right, enough of the studio tour. So that's it for today. Uh, subscribe if you're not subscribed, leave me a comment. And again, join the conversation on the community tab on Twitter or on Instagram, and I look forward to seeing you soon in the new year. I think I'm gonna do one more video this year, a thank you video, usually I do a thank you video, so I'll say thank you now, but I'm gonna thank people specifically in the next video. Peace! Check out the community tab uh, and join the conversation there, and thank you for watching. Subscribe if you're not subscribed, hit like, and leave me a comment, and more importantly, Happy New Year, Happy New Year, Happy New Year, Happy New Year, Happy New Year. Or follow me on Instagram, and let's talk about the target. Peace. Oh yeah, Happy New Year, Happy New Year, Happy New Year, Happy New Year, Happy New Year. Happy New Year.